Well, welcome back, friends. Uh, today we're going to work on the PCB design of the backplane, which actually is very fairly simple since it's just straight lines between all 40 pins. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and do the layout, show you what I was doing, including the uh, the power in. Um, on the first version of the Pony 80, I was uh, I was eagerly showing it to someone and accidentally plugged in 12 volts instead of 5 volts and fried everything that was on the card. So um, I learned from that and decided to put in a power supply or a power regulator, sorry, that uh, would put out 5 volts no matter what I plugged in. So uh, yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's why I've got the LM7805 uh, power regulator chip. So again, as we did in the the uh, previous uh, video, I'm going to go to design and convert schematic to PCB. And again, what it's going to do is it's just going to give me a square with all the parts out there. Now, in this case, I know that I want the square to be at least a certain size because we've got to worry about being able to fit the cards on there. So if I take uh, this pin up there and rotate it, I know that it has to be at least that wide. So I can, I see just from that, that I can take that and move it up and make the, uh, the PCB just a little bit narrower. But then as far as everything else goes, I can go ahead and just rotate and throw it on here. Um, and like I said, you can see even with the uh, with the routes that are on there that it's all just a straight line uh, for the most part. So uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, leave some space in between because we want to be able to fit like the ROM chip that has the uh, uh, ZIF, the uh, zero insertion force. Uh, handle and stuff like that. We want to be able to open that up even when it's in between uh, several cards. So I'm going to go ahead and set all this stuff up here. And I, I, well, I do want to leave some space at the end here uh, for the power supply and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and extend that. Uh, but then I'm just going to select all of these. And I think I mentioned this on the last video, but I'm going to go ahead and go up here to format. I'm going to align the horizontal centers, meaning they're going to be all equal uh, as far as the, uh, the horizontal goes. I'm going to kind of center it in the board, but maybe not so much. Um, cause I've got all these capacitors that I want to put in around the bottom of the, the card. So maybe I'll even just extend the bottom just a bit, but we'll get more to that when I get to the capacitors. But the other thing I want to do on uh, all seven of these uh, these uh, female headers is I want to set I want to space them evenly. So I'm going to format and distribute uh, horizontally, and what that will do is it'll make an equal all the way across. So there is the uh, holes for the headers for the um. Uh, for all the female headers that we're going to plug the cards into. Now what I want to do is bring in the uh, power jack itself, which usually, down here, usually I just stuff over in the corner here and let it sit. Um, I also want to put a, um, let's see, let's go ahead. And I also want to put the, um, power regulator up here. I definitely want to put this, the pinouts here. If you look at the back at the, uh, the schematic, I've got the, uh, the input right here and we've got a 0.22 microfarad capacitor to the ground just for smoothing. We've got a 470 microfarad capacitor to the ground again for smoothing, but then we've got this header here. And pins one and two are basically the switch that can turn it on. So you notice that the power is coming in and then going out. Now, 
I know everybody's going to say, oh, do you really want to switch all those amps through one switch? And no, we really don't. Um, in a future version, I'm going to change this out for an LM317, which is a, a variable voltage regulator. But also what it will do is allow me with that variable voltage uh, pin to turn the voltage totally off without putting, you know, one, two amps through a switch. Um, we can do a switch. I mean, it is kind of cool to think of Marty McFly walking in with the key, turning it, and then hitting the big circuit breaker to turn on the guitar amp. We could do that with our, our Pony 80. Um, and actually, kind of sexy if you're into electronics and pretty much a geek. But, um, you know, in, in all in, intents and purposes, we really want to limit the current going through that switch. So in the future, we'll do this and um, kind of, I kind of gave it away already, but I'll do a video on that in the future. But right now, yes, we're just going to switch all of the, those amps through a switch on pins one and two. And then on pins three and four, we actually have a, uh, a way to hook up an LED. Uh, through a 1k resistor from 5 volts to ground so that we get a power indicator um so that's what that header is for so let me go back to the pcb and we'll put that header on the board there we go and we'll put this power regulator right there and again i'm just kind of uh, placing things on here that, you know, no particular way. Now these capacitors all go between five volts and ground. So we can literally just put them at the end of every card. Are they needed? Probably not on every card. Um, again, I like putting them there just for, um, if I have a card like the LCD display, um, if you run it without a 470, uh, microfarad capacitor it runs fine but if you run it with it there's a little less delay in the lighting up of the uh, characters so I like to uh, move it move I like to have that on there just so that uh, it it maximizes the uh, power consumption and again with these I'm going to go ahead and there we go. Do it again. I'm going to go ahead and select these. I'm going to uh, do format, align horizontal, and then I'm also going to distribute horizontally. So you can see that uh, these are all in the same same horizontal plane um again it's not a not a huge deal but it does for me it makes me feel better about that now these smaller capacitors actually uh, smooth out some of the power flux they smooth out some of the power fluctuations so i like having those on there um for each slot um uh, not I'm not going to say those are 100% needed. I'm not going to say that they're not needed. I'm uh, Again, I'm not an electrical engineer. All I'm going to say is that uh, when I've been running some of the cards, they do need that extra uh, filtration. So let me go ahead and align these and then distribute those. And So there we've got the, the small ones. Now this is... A power LED in addition to the pinout. This is more for when you're just running it on the card. You can see that. Um, and then we've got the uh, the 1K resistor that goes to ground. Um, and then we've got some capacitors including, uh, let's see, C10 and C11. So uh, which one is the 22? Ah, C15. Yep, okay, so I've already screwed up because I took C15 and put it right here. And that's not that's not supposed to go there. That's actually supposed to go. So 
um, that. And then C15 is going to go up here. There we go. Next to that. As is that capacitor. And then um, that is for the LED that's going to be coming out of the header. And so it's just a 1K between that LED and ground. We'll go ahead and do that. So there is our basic layout. Um, again, nothing, you know, this, this is not earth shattering science. It's, it's, it's just a basic layout. So, uh, we'll go ahead and set the LED there, save this and go ahead and just do an auto route. Like I did on our, uh, CPU module. And this should run fairly quick. There we go. 329 connections all straight through. Um, we've got a lot of, of this stuff. Now, the one thing I'm going to change is the power coming in from the uh, power jack. I want to change those routes to be, um, a lot more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I want it to be bigger, uh, that way, um, you know, the 12 volts coming through or, or however many volts you're putting into this, uh, the system, we can cover it. So I'm going to take this route right here, which has a width of 0.254 and I'm going to go ahead and make it a 0.5. And that's not based on any science right now. It's literally based on, uh, just, you know, a gut feeling and what I've done in the past got to hit enter on easy EDA for the change to take place. There we go. And then ground and we're going there. And the other place we're going to after that is we're going here and I'm going to make that a 0.5 as well. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at some of these routings and you know, first what I say that first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the DRC, the design rules, because if in widening these, I got too close to something else, the design rules will tell me right away. So let me go ahead and check the DRC. Yep. See, there we go. So right there, it's saying we need more clearance on that. So I could, I could right now take that and go, Let's not do that. Let's hit control, our favorite control Z, undo. Don't you wish we had one of those in life? So you can move it up this way and move it out that way. And that's actually moved it away from that there. So if I go ahead and do check DRC again, it says there's no DRC errors and we're good to go. Now, one more thing I like to do and it's a personal preference, nothing else, but I like to make all of my, uh, pin, my pins the same. So I don't want like this one right here has a 180 by 180 width and height. Um, this one right here has a 160 by 160. This one right here has a 180 by 180. Um, but you can see how all of these are just a little different. Now these have to be different because the plug that we're using fits into there, and, and so those are different. But in Easy EDA, we've got an easy way to, in Easy EDA, we've got a quick way to select all of these, which is find similar objects, pads, and I can find them all. And if you notice, all the pads on the board are now selected. But again, like I said, I can change the width and the height and the whole diameter, but I don't want to change these on the plug because that plug has specific, uh, a specific shape and a specific size that we want to continue to use. So I'm going to push the control button and unselect these three pins. 
and I'm going to deal with those later. So right now, I've got every other pin on the board selected. And I'm going to make them all the same. And so what I like to do, and again, personal preference, you can do whatever. I like to do an oval. And I like to do a width of, I like, there we go, 1.5 millimeters. And it'll take a second to propagate through all of the, and a height of 2.25 millimeters, which again will take just a second to propagate. Maybe more than a second, but so there we go. That's what that looks like. But I also like to make the whole uniform at one millimeter. So as this goes and finishes, as we wait for it, there we go. Now all of the holes, the widths, and the height are the same. Um, and it just, basically the reason why I like it is because when soldering, everything is exactly the same. I don't have to worry about the, the pads being different sizes. Now, with the power plug, I want to go ahead and change those. Um, let me see if, see, those are the same width. Um, let me go ahead and just select one at a time. I can probably do both of those. Yes. So that's 1.5 by 380. Um, to be honest, I think that's a little thin for soldering. So I'm going to go ahead and just bump this up a bit to two millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and make this four millimeters. And so it just gives me a little more copper pad to throw that solder on. Um, again, what we have to worry about is the DRC, the, the, the design rules. Um, and if you notice here, we got it closer to this track or this trace. So I'll go ahead and move this trace up even farther just to get it away from that pad. Um, and so there's that. So these, each of these pads are two millimeters by four millimeters. And if I go down here to this pad, you can see it's one again, 1 1.5. So I'm going to go two. And it's interesting that this is even a different size than these originally were. Cause these were 375, so two and four or 3.8. Sorry. So now these are all the same size and it, it's not a big deal uh, unless you're OCD. Um, I don't think those would have mattered, but like I said, when I'm soldering, I like to have enough copper pad just to, uh, first of all, to be uniform, but then to also make sure that it takes the, the solder well. Um, so there's our back plane. Um, you know, there's, there's nothing spectacular to this. I'm not, you know, making a revelation that, that, you know, nobody realized. I can't patent this by any means because it's a, a fairly simple design, but it's just some of the stuff that I learned doing stuff, uh, do, doing the, the Pony 80 um, and struggling with having too small of pads, uh, struggling with not having a dedicated power supply. Um, and so I hope you learn from these struggles because it really is... Uh, uh, it it really helps in in the future. Um, you can save money on shipping. Yes, I know that like JLC PCB uh, advertises two dollar boards. You can get five for two dollars, and that's great. But it costs you twenty dollars to ship them, um, and that's just money out the window if you make a mistake and your pads are too small and you can't solder them, um, or if you don't put a power regulator in there and you plug a 12 volt power supply into a five volt circuit, not a good day. Um, there may have been alcohol involved, but I'm not gonna admit to that. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put on, again, as I, as I spoke in the last video, we're gonna put on a ground plane on the bottom. So we're going to make this on the bottom layer, and we're going to no, you don't drag and drop. You have to click, drag, click, drag, click, 
drag, click, right click. And there you go. There's your file. Now what I'm going to do is just because you notice that this, this uh, ground plane is all on top, which it shouldn't be, but it is. I'm going to go ahead and reroute this. Uh, whoops. Unroute all. And then route, auto route. And then run. There you go, 100%. And now it's going to redraw the, the ground plane and it's behind everything else. So what you can see is what's actually going to be on the board. Um, and so uh, in, a, in a future video on the Pony 80, uh, playlist. I'll you know show you soldering this board. It's coming up actually really soon. Uh, soldering this board, getting everything installed, and then plugging the cards into it. So, anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, again, leave me messages if you did or if you didn't. I mean, I'm I'm willing to take criticism. I'm I'm good with that. But uh, this is just what I went through. It's what I learned. And I'm hoping that passing this on to you saves somebody maybe some shipping costs, definitely some time. Um, I know how frustrating it is to get something after waiting for a week and then finding out it doesn't work because you made a stupid mistake. And to be honest, there may be a stupid mistake in this that I'll learn about when I plug my cards into it. So um, if I have that stupid mistake, I will definitely share it so nobody else has that same mistake. But until then, have a great day, and uh, we'll talk later.